Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. All right. Hey, we are in a series on the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus. We're going through the book of Exodus, looking at some of the truths that God wants to speak to us and encourage us, looking at the life of Moses. Last week, we talked about Moses' calling, and I know that many of you in here uh, don't think that you have a calling, but every single one of us has a calling. If you're alive, you have a calling, you have a destiny, you have a purpose, There are people who go their entire lives and never answer the call. They never fulfill their destiny. They never fulfill their purpose. That's sad, but it's true. Some people are just oblivious to it. Now, when we say calling, I'm not saying to be a pastor. I'm not saying to have a church or being an evangelist. That's not what I'm talking about. Some of you are called to do exactly what you're doing right now. Some of you are being a light in dark places. Some of you are raising your children in the way of the Lord so when they're old, they'll not depart from it. And then there's others in the room that could care less that God has called them to do anything and they're gonna do whatever they wanna do, right? That's the truth, that's, that's human nature. That's human nature. Moses was not one of those people and today we wanna look at crossing points in Moses' life. Has anybody gone through a season or gone through a time where they believe that they crossed from one time or one situation into a next? Have you ever had a crossing point in your life? Maybe you cross from a bad season to a good one or you cross from being sick into a healthy lifestyle or healthy living. Maybe you went from a time of depression and crossed into joy. Maybe you went from being in debt. So here's the cool thing about being in debt, right? There's only one step from debt to prosperity. There's one step. You go from being in debt to the land of even and you're in prosperity. It's a great step, right? But that's a crossing point. Maybe you went from uh, a bad job and you crossed over into a good one. In the book of Exodus, God's people have been in captivity and God is freeing them through the leadership of Moses. Pharaoh realizes that he's essentially losing control of his destiny and his people and his country. And so uh, the children of Israel are kind of stepping out. They're, They're being freed, but they were slaves. They were in bondage. So as they escape, as they leave, They're leaving with no armor, no army, no weapons. Their only weapon, their only defense is God himself. There's two crossing points that are going to happen in this story and in the life of Moses. The first, Moses is going to have a crossing point within himself. A crossing point within himself. He's going to cross from insecurity to being secure. And I want to encourage somebody today, like, and I think it's a lot with men more than ladies, but, you know, I think a lot of guys struggle with insecurity. Am I enough? Have I done enough? Am I doing enough? And the trap is an unhealthy comparison. An unhealthy comparison to someone else's calling that's not yours. An unhealthy comparison to someone's BS social media. 99.9% of people's social media feeds are BS. They're touched up, they're filtered. And you're trying to compare your behind the scenes and who you think you are to someone else's filtered life. And it creates insecurity. The second crossing is the children of Israel are going to cross the Red Sea. So let's take a look at this today in Exodus 14, 10. When Pharaoh drew near, so they're they're leaving. When uh, Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. So imagine you're about to be in a war. You think you're about to be in a war, and you have no weapons. That's kind of scary, right? The Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, isn't this funny? They're crying out to the Lord but they're blaming Moses. 
Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? Whew. What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Man, is it? Man, isn't that some of the fights that we've had in our marriages? What have you done to our finances? What have you done to our relationship? What have you done to us? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. So Moses just takes this step and says yes to God. He says yes to his calling. He says yes to his leadership. He takes a step forward, a crossing point into trusting God and doing it. And all the people, I mean, we're talking two million plus people are saying, no, no, go back. We don't like the new you. Go back to the old you. Cross back over to your insecurity and your stuttering. I want to point out today that not everybody who calls you friend or family are going to be happy for your progress. There are some people who like you insecure. There are some people who like you codependent. There are some people who like you to keep your opinion to yourself. Come on, somebody. There are some people who just want you to shut up and do what they say and never answer your calling because they can control you that way. And the people are trying to now control their leader. They hit him with a triple attack. First they hit him with sarcasm. Be very, very careful with sarcasm because you're telling the truth. No, no I was just joking, no you're not. Now you're a liar. Now you're sarcastic and you're a liar. Sarcasm is the truth. The person is saying what they want to say and then calling it a joke. No, you're just a mean person and who's doing it with a smile on their face. They hit him with sarcasm. Is it because there's no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the wilderness to die? Just kidding. <laughs> then they hit him with the I told you so. We said this would happen. We said this would happen. And isn't it funny that they're questioning him in the middle of their freedom, in the middle of the process, in the middle of the process. They haven't even seen the outcome yet. In the middle of the process, they're pulling the I told you so. Come on, somebody. And then they're pulling the abusive ex. The abusive acts. It was better that we stayed there and served the Egyptians. No, it wasn't. You were literally getting beat. You were literally getting beat. You were literally getting killed. No, it was not better. This attacks Moses as a leader, as a leader and attacks his security that he has now crossed into. Go back, Moses. Go back to who you were and there's a lot of people in your life that are going to want you to go back. Back on your word. Back on your promises. Back on pursuing your destiny. I'm telling you right now, man, if you want to get to where you're going, there's some people you're going to have to step over to get there. Now, I'm not saying unfairly step over. I'm saying people who choose to stand in your way of your calling. I got a saying that I began to use in my life in my late 30s, and, and it was for anybody who I had to work with, and it's this, lead me, follow me, or get out of my way. Lead me, follow, listen, anybody on my staff can lead me. Pastor Chris led me today. Pastor Chris led me in worship. Lead me. Lead me somewhere good. And you better know, if I don't think he led somewhere good, we're going to have a conversation tomorrow. And I'm going to say, hey, bud, where'd you lead us this weekend? Where'd you lead me? Please don't lead me back to the same well from five years ago. I want a new and living water, right? Lead me, follow me, because I sure as heck know where I want to go. Or just get out of my way. 
Stop talking nonsense that's trying to mess with my head. Come on, somebody. The moment you make a crossing point into, in your personal life, the enemy will attack you and try to make you retreat back to the other side of your life. I don't like who you've become. Confident? Assertive? Go-getting? Having a dream and a vision? Man, you better get out of my way. You better get out of my way. I had somebody tell me one time, well, Pastor Mike, you know, when it comes to staffing and all that kind of stuff, you just got to work with what you got. No, I don't. I can go hire people that I want to work with. I, I don't, I'm not stuck. I think that's one of the things that God's called me to like kind of hammer into the local church. I'm so tired of the local church being stuck. Stuck in complacency. Stuck in being satisfied just to get to heaven. Stuck in the way that church was done in the 1980s. And I get that there was something about the 1980s. Well, most of you weren't born, but some of you were. But that was like my prime. <laughs> You know, I know that there was something about the 1980s and the word of faith and the praying in tongues and all that. That was attractive, but God has done more since then. And we can't get stuck in that season. There's crossing points in each generation. Let's take a look at this. The people are telling Moses to go back to who you were. But Moses remembers Exodus 3.12. And God said to Moses, I will be with you. When you get a word from God, no one can challenge that. And here's the problem with the local church today. I'm not saying this church, I'm saying the church at large, the universal church, is that we're going off the pastor's word and not God's word. We have exalted pastors to, the, to be the place of the voice of God alone instead of the written word. We don't have a scripture that we're standing on that God said, and if God said it, that settles it, he will do what he said. But the same thing in our lives. We're combating sickness or we're combating disease, and we're not actually standing on a scripture. Because if we were standing on a scripture, we wouldn't challenge God in the middle of the process. Look, they're challenging Moses in the middle of the process because they don't actually trust God, they were trusting Moses. They're the children of Israel, but they're listening only to a man's voice because they did this. They said, listen, man, we don't, want, we don't really want to hear from Jehovah. We don't really want to hear from Yahweh. You, you lead us, Moses. You speak to us. And so when you're trying to stand on a scripture that Mike said, when you're trying to stand on a scripture that your grandma said, there's no foundation to that because you don't know what God said to you. When God says something to you, there's no questioning. So this is a crossing point for Moses. The God of the universe affirms him and says, I am with you. Moses, only armed with a word from God and a shepherd's staff replies to the people in Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of our Lord. I mean, dude, if you just, if you just made that a mantra of your life in a hardship or a time of struggle, stand firm, fear not, and see the salvation of our Lord, which he will work for you today. Now, he has this confidence, not because it's something that he has been his whole life, but because he had a crossing point from insecurity to securely knowing who he is in God. That's why he can stand here and say this to them. Stand firm, fear not, see the salvation of your Lord who is working for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. Now, he did not know this in his mind. God didn't foretell him this. He's prophesying. He's prophesying out of the, I mean, now he's stepping into his priesthood, right? He's prophesying these things. 
The Lord will fight for you and you, will only to, you are only to be silent. Isn't that funny? Because like the way that I was raised, you gotta understand the way that I was raised. I was raised in a Pentecostal word of faith church. And so things only happened if we were screaming in tongues. If we were screaming in the spirit and sweat was coming down and we were popping blood vessels in our eyeballs, we were stirring the gates of hell. Yet, he just says, hey, listen, the Lord's going to fight for you. Just shut up. Stop running your mouth. Because you keep running your mouth, you're going to talk yourself out of your blessing. Many of us, oh, man, I just got this one. Many of us pray ourselves out of faith. Listen to what I just said. Many of us pray ourselves out of faith because we just re- keep reminding God how bad it is. That's the antithesis of faith. <laughs> the antithesis of faith is reminding God of how bad we feel. He knows everything. He knows how you feel. Faith is quoting the promises, quoting the outcome in the midst of the adverse feelings that you're having in your body. Moses understood the value of a word from God and it strengthened him. It strengthened him. And in that moment, instead of Moses stepping back, crossing back into insecurity, he took another step forward. He took another step forward. No, God said. God said. And if God said it, honestly, All I have to do is believe it and keep crossing. Yeah, this is some good stuff. You got to go back and watch this. Now, Moses could not control when God would act on behalf of his people. But he knew that he could offer the assurance that God was going to act. And I think that's where we get hung up. We get hung up when God doesn't act on our timeline. I prayed it one time and I expected it to happen instantly. Come on, somebody. Because we want to operate in the gifts of miracles when it's convenient, but we don't want to act in gifts of miracles when God asks you to pray for somebody else. In the middle of the Galleria Mall, God says to you, I want you to pray for this person right now, out loud. In front of everybody in the gallery of mall. Oh, God. But you want him to move a miracle on your behalf when you pray for yourself. Come on, I know, I'm just saying. We can't have it both ways. Do you want to be an instant miracle working God or not? Because he wants to use you in that if you have that gift. All right. Let's get to the greatest deliverance story that's in the entire Bible. Exodus 14, 15. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. I love that. I love that. Man, God is such like the greatest leader. Why are you coming to me with this? Lead your people. Make a march. Tell them to move forward. And if you don't get anything out of my message today, I feel that right now in 2023, It is time for the church to move forward. It's time for the church to move forward. We are still stuck in COVID. We're still stuck in the mentality of COVID. Although we said, I'm just waiting for things to get back to normal. We refuse to get back to normal. We've accepted what the lifestyle of 2020 was. And we're blaming it on a pandemic instead of blaming it on our complacency. We're complacent watching everything online. We're complacent door dashing and not cooking. Come on, somebody, fix my britches on that one. Just say, I'm not, this isn't an attack, this isn't accusatory, but I'm tired of being stuck. And we're allowing ourselves to be stuck. And Moses is sitting here and God says, why are you letting these people stay stuck? 
I want to work a miracle, but you got to cross. You got to cross over. You got to advance your life. You got to stop sitting still. Tell the people of Israel to go forward, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. You know what's crazy about this translation right here? Is it doesn't say, raise your staff, stretch out your arm, and I will divide it for you. He says, your obedience to what I'm calling you to do is power enough to divide a sea. I placed the power in you. I called you and anointed you from the foundation of the earth. All you have to do is lift up your hands in obedience to that which I called you to do, and you have the power to divide seas. <laughs> then Moses tells him, then, then God tells Moses, lift up your staff, stretch out your hands, and the sea will divide. So what does Moses do? He stretches out his hand, lifts up his staff, and the sea, the sea divides. Here's what I'm going to tell you today. God is using tools that Moses acquired pre-calling in order to fulfill his calling. God comes and says, what's in your hand, Moses? What's in your hand, Moses? Pre-calling. Moses says, who am I? I'm nobody. How am I going to do this? He says, no, you've been tending sheep. You've been tending sheep and you have a staff in your hand. I placed that in your hand and I'm gonna use that. God uses a tool of pre-calling to fulfill his calling. And I know that some of you don't think that you have a great calling, but you got a wrench in your hand, you got a broom in your hand, you got knowledge in your mind, you got keyboard skills, and God is saying, I wanna use you to advance the kingdom. What's in your hand? hand already. Do not think for one minute that you have nothing to offer God. All right, Exodus 14, 19, then the angel of the Lord of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. So he was leading them, the angel of the Lord was leading them, and now he goes behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. So the army's trying to advance. They're moving forward. The cloud comes down, so they never, they never really advance upon them. I'm going to add this here. <clears throat> In any battle, the rear is the most vulnerable to attack by the enemy. And I think that's where many Christians get messed up, is that they plan that, okay, I need to take care of this, and I gotta watch this, and I know that I'm, I'm weak in this area of my life, and that's all in front of us, but a lot of times we miss the sneak attack from behind. Come on. This is the importance of having community and friends. People that can see your blind spots. Areas that you think you have control over, but they're already seeing them slip in your life. Come on, in CR and AA and NA, accountability partners are big. Because you will lie to yourself a lot. You will lie to yourself a lot. But a good friend will see what's coming behind you. Say, hey man, I see these areas of your life slipping. Maybe we should step in this, maybe we should check this up. So that's when the God moves behind them. He protects them from the sneak attack of the enemy, attacking their weak areas. In verse 14, 21, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind at night and made the sea dry land. It's the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. And here's the crazy part if you think about, if you've ever walked into a lake or, or water, like it's got that really mucky, stuff at the bottom because it holds water, sometimes a, a bed of clay or, or whatever it is. Like For that to dry out instantly, that, that, that's even a bigger miracle than the fact that the sea divided in and of itself, but that it was dry ground. 
dry ground. So the chariots could get across, the people could walk across. And we're not talking like a couple hundred people, we're talking a couple million people. A couple million people cross. God parts the sea for people to walk on dry ground. But although they're crossing on dry ground, their past is still trying to catch up to them. That's what creates anxiety in our lives. That's what creates depression in our lives. When we allow the past to catch up to us. Or we allow the fear of the past to catch up to us. That's why it's important for Christians to keep moving forward. When you stop, when you stop following God, when you stop moving forward, it's very easy to allow the enemy to catch up with your past. Now listen, God's behind you. God's got that thing blocked, but it doesn't change what's happening in your mind. Your mind will slow you down. The Egyptians are pursuing them quickly. God says, stretch out your hands. The chariots and all of them get across. So Moses stretched out his hands over the sea. Watch, they cross over on dry land. Now God says, all right, it's time. He brings his hands down. The waters crash in while the Egyptian army is in the midst of the sea. While they're crossing over the same blessing, they're crossing over on the same miracle. Isn't that crazy? That although it's the enemy, like people can benefit from your blessings and your miracles, or so they think they are at that point. I mean, it's the enemy. Moses brings his hands down. The sea crashes in, and it washes out, wipes out that entire army in one instance. In one instance, the Egyptians are washed up in the sea. Here's a couple points I want to give to you today as I close. God delivers us from our past. Or let me say it like this, God will drown the last of your past if you let him. Let God drown your past. Let God drown your past. Stop letting your past creep up. Let dead things stay dead. Stop going fishing in the sea of your past. Stop digging up those past things. Husbands and wives, stop digging up the past. Stop holding it against each other. If we're going to move forward and we're going to cross into the joy of the Lord, if we're going to cross in to our calling, if we're going to cross in to a better season, we got to stop living in the past. God tells Elijah this. He says, listen, forget the former things. Forget the past. For I want to do a new thing. And how many of us have stood in God's way of him wanting to do a new thing? Well, I kind of like the old thing. I'm comfortable in my old rocking chair. Your old rocking chair's got tears in it and springs popping out. It's the ugliest thing anyone's ever seen. But because you're used to your rocking chair, you want to keep it. And then you get mad, your wife buys you a brand new rocking chair. Hey, I got this chair for you. It's the new and improved. It's got massaging. What's wrong with my chair? It's disgusting. It smells like cat pee. <laughs> And we do that to God, man. What's wrong with this? It, it stinks. Your past stinks. Your, your past doubts in God stink. Your past depression stinks. Your past anxiety stinks. Some of your past decisions stink. Let them stay dead. Let them stay drowned in the sea of forgetfulness by God. The mistakes of your past do not have the authority over you. They do not have authority over them. They do not define you. They do not define you. Too many of us allow our past to define the decisions we make today. Too many of us are making the wrong decisions today because we're so afraid to repeat the past. Give it to the Lord. Make prayer-filled decisions for today. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this, 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. So guess what? Man, just keep doing this. His mercies are new every morning. Bring it to the Lord. Repent of the past. Repent of the past, it means change your thinking of the past. Don't go back into it. Don't go buy another set of those things that's destroying your life. If alcohol is destroying your life, don't go buy another bottle. If drugs are destroying your life, don't go buy more. Come on. Is it that simple? No, but yes. No, it's really, really hard, but guess what? It's that easy. We got to put people in our lives. We got to put people in lives who care enough for us not to be codependent to keep buying the things that are destroying us. Number two, our God is a warrior. Our God is a warrior. So guess what? Those of you that don't like to fight, I mean, I happen to like to fight, but those of you that don't like to fight, you don't have to. God is your warrior. It says that he is your sword and your shield. It means he's your defender and your offensive. He's both. You can rest in his goodness because he's our warrior. He's our strength. Exodus 15:1. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. For the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Do you trust him enough to believe that he'll defend you? That's where a lot of us miss it. Well, I hear stories of you doing it for everyone else, but would you actually do it for me? His word says it. We have to be secure in that. We have to trust that. The Lord is a man of war. He's a mighty warrior. So what are we to do? Walk. Walk. Move forward. Get unstuck. Get unstuck in your life. Move forward. Advance. Cross over into the calling in which God called you. Yes, tragedies happen. Bad things have happened in your life. People have taken advantage of you. Things have happened to you against your own will. Yes, you've made bad decisions. Yes, you bought things you shouldn't have. Yes, you went bankrupt. But don't get stuck in that. Don't get stuck in a sick season. Move forward. Move forward. It says this, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. I wonder if they said, no, dude, this is crazy. This can't happen. This is, is this some kind of illusion? Am I being pranked right now? How is this water doing this? Bro, I'm just telling you right now, if water went like this and there's walls, I'm like running my fingers through it. This is the coolest thing. But many of us get stuck in fear. Because if they cross over that sea, they're not crossing back on dry ground. The miracle is in advancing, not in retreating. In order for them to retreat, they would have to then go get a boat, take matters in their own hands and float back over. Some of us do it. Some of us do that. Some of us do that. Take matters back in our hands just to get back to our past. God is making a way where there seems to be no way. And my urgent calling to you today is this. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. Get out of depression. Get unstuck from depression. And, and that, though, listen, that's the actual pandemic of COVID. The anxiety and depression levels today are 200 times what they were pre-pandemic. The fear of people, the fear that people have today, it's oppressive. It's suppressive of your calling. 
God is calling you out from seated in a slumber of spiritual complacency to stand up and answer the calling that he's placed on your life. Now listen, I know that I'm not like the most spiritual pastor in the world and that I don't have healing lines every single Sunday. But I'm telling you right now, I'm speaking to you today under the unction of the Holy Spirit that he's calling out not just to this church but to a generation. That this is the generation of post-pandemic. This is the generation that's going to step out of depression and anxiety that is not going to be the most medicated generation ever. The joy of the Lord overrides any Xanax you could ever take. The joy of the Lord overrides depression. The joy of the Lord overrides. Listen, man, the Bible says a strong spirit will sustain you bodily, but a wounded spirit who can bear. And guess what, how that comes about? It says that um, um, laughter or a merry heart does good like a medicine. That's how your body gets better. Not by Google searching and reminding God how bad it is. He knows. But there's some things that you have to do and it's called move forward. You have to move forward. And that's scary. That's scary when you have to move forward from the known to the unknown. I've never been here before. I've never done this before. I don't know what this looks like to do it alone. But I've got to take a step from the known to the unknown to say yes to the calling, to say yes to what God wants to do in my life. Come on, somebody. This isn't a message to Mike McKelvey. This is the message to a generation. Moses was leading a generation. He was leading massive groups of people, God's people. And if you're here today, it's because God drew you today. If you're watching this a year from now, it's because God drew you to this, in this moment, to say yes to a calling, to say yes to a movement. Christianity is still the greatest movement that has ever happened in the world. Christianity has had its flaws. It has had its list of failures in leadership, obviously. But it doesn't change what Jesus Christ came to this earth to do. He came to this earth to call, call the lost to salvation. The bondage to be free. The hurting to be healed. And the depressed to find joy. That's why Jesus came. He didn't come for the healthy he didn't come for those who thought they were perfect. He came for those who needed a savior. And that's all of us. If you're here today or you're watching online and you've never had an opportunity to take a step towards God, to cross out of darkness into light, to cross out of your past into your future calling, I wanna invite you today to say yes to God, to become a believer in Jesus. And you don't have to take a class, you don't have to be brainwashed. You literally just have to step over and say yes to God. Say yes, I'm, I'm tired of living the life that I'm living. I'm ready to live the fullness, the joy of my salvation. If you're here today or you're watching on, I say yeah, it's time for me to say yes to God. Would you pray this prayer with me? And here at Family Church, we love you so much, we all like to pray together. And it goes this, dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor John Mark, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to take your next step in your journey. We'd love to help you do that and you can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started 